Hello, everyone. Welcome to our online video series, Reading Hope in Trying Times. Our guest today is our good friend, Jim McIntyre. Jim has a passion for social justice, advocacy, and activism, so his pastoral emphasis over the past 30 plus years has focused on issues of injustice and a call for a more fully inclusive church. His passion and advocacy for the full inclusion of people with disabilities in faith communities can be seen in his current writing and presentations, which focus primarily on disability, scripture, and faith, grounded in life with his 31-year-old daughter, Lindsay, who has a congenital physical, intellectual, and cognitive disabilities, and his father, John, who lived his adult life on one leg, a result of a World War II plane crash in the South Pacific, a life which ended at age 59 when latent post-traumatic stress led to his suicide. Jim received his MDiv from Princeton Theological Seminary, and he holds a JD degree from the Widener University School of Law, and a Bachelor of Arts, cum laude, in political science and American history from Ryder University. Jim is currently pastor of Royersford United Methodist Church in Royersford, Pennsylvania. With his children, he leads Lindsay's Gift, an access fund, which is a 501c3 nonprofit providing small access grants to faith communities working toward better architectural and attitudinal access. Jim is the author of the new book, Lindsay's Gift, Faith Learnings from a Girl with No Words. And I'm also happy to say that Jim is an alum attendee of several of our conferences, and he serves as one of our curators for Compassionate Christianity. So we're really glad to have you here with us today, Jim. Great. Thank you, Ryan. Great to be here. Well, maybe we could start um, by having you share just some of your thoughts on this uh, pandemic that we're going through. Well, it's not uh, been easy. We all know that. Um, you know, things change uh, hourly, it seems like news is changing and uh, all kinds of things are happening. But it's been a challenge for, um, for us as a family, for us uh, as pastors. My wife is also a, a United Methodist pastor. So um, for us professionally, the challenge has been mastering uh, the art of video worship services and making that happen and using um, uh, media to to uh, be able to bring worship on Sunday mornings. And I mean, it, it feels like we've been pretty successful. I was joking with my congregation, um, my leadership, that attendance, views on, on videos is higher than it would be normally if we were in the building. Um, so, uh, so that's been a challenge, but um, also it's, you know, it's, it's been um, fulfilling to be able to do that. Personally, um, I've been really, uh, shut down um, in indoors here. Um, just before the pandemic was announced, I was told that I have a, uh, a lung condition, which um, is pretty serious and um, makes me more susceptible if, you know, we get that high risk category. So um, I'm staying inside and uh, not getting out a whole lot. And now that I am out, I'm using a mask, of course. Um, and, and for Lindsay, my daughter, who uh, we, you just mentioned in the intro, Lindsay has, uh, has a compromised immune system as well. So she hasn't seen outside for the whole month. Um, on top of that, my, my son works at a hospital, so he's in every day um, dealing with this and wearing uh, all the protective gear that he can get. And my younger daughter is six months pregnant, so she's hiding out in her place. and. Um, it's it's been it's been a real um, a real challenge. And on top of everything, I just got news yesterday that my sister, who lives in a nursing home, has uh, tested positive for uh, the virus. So keeping her in prayer as she's at the hospital now and trying to to deal with it. So wow. it's been it's you know it's been uh, it's been a lot. Everybody's got their stories, um, and it's uh, you know it's just a real challenging time. But you know, I, I know we'll get through all this. Well, you've got a lot of folks that uh, need to be careful, need to take care. Yeah, exactly right, right. I didn't realize right. about your sister. I'm sorry to hear about that. Yeah, I just, just found out just yesterday um, that she, she went into the hospital the day before and they just tested positive yesterday. So um, trying to trying to figure out how she's going to deal with it. Well, hope that hope that goes well. You know, there's certainly been plenty of people that have um, come through it, so I hope that's the case with her. 
yeah, I got word from the nursing home where she lives that they have had several cases, but zero deaths at that nursing home. So that was good, good news. Uh, yes, yes. Hopefully she's getting the right uh, treatment. So you've been through plenty of things over your lifetime. Uh, how has God helped support you in, in all the different challenges that you've faced? You know, I, th I think for me, it's always been just kind of um, keep looking forward, keep, keep looking ahead, God pushing me or nudging me or um, uh, leading me ahead. Uh, there are, there are uh, times when, you know, you feel like you just want to bury your head under the covers, um, but, you know, you, you, you need to find the, the strength to keep moving forward. Um, and I've, I've had lots of those times um, in my life and um, seems like there's always something there. Some, there's, God is always there trying to, uh, to encourage me and, and get me um, going forward. Well, I can imagine that, you know, since you and your wife are both pastors at churches, you know, kind of the immediacy of the needs in those areas probably, I mean, if nothing else keeps you really busy. <laughs> It does. Yeah, yeah, for sure it does. Um, and, and it's kind of, uh, you know, I think most pastors would, would say this too. It's kind of odd. Um, it, nothing, nothing's predictable, really, right? So one, uh, one morning I might be visiting somebody at a hospital, and by that afternoon I'm trying to unclog, unclog a toilet in the church. You know, so, you know, <laughs> days, you know days can vary from, from uh, from the extremes so uh yeah so it's it's challenging but I, you know i've been doing it for it's hard to believe for 32 years i think now and um you know i i wake up and i think 32 years i never even imagined that you know when i was starting out that it would go this this long but uh but it's been very rewarding and i so i left a um an early law practice. I started practicing law and then decided to go to seminary. And, um, uh, and I don't regret that. I've, I've never regretted that. I've always thought it was the right decision to make. So, um, you know, as a pastor, I'm sure you normally do a lot of visitation of people in nursing homes and, you know, uh, otherwise shut in. Um, have you been able to still achieve that through phone and Zoom and such? Yeah, just phone and, and Zoom, um, and I, I'm constantly in touch with our uh, with our leadership. And um, so far, we've not heard of anybody in the congregation that's been um, that's been sick because of this. Uh, so, you know, I'm grateful for that. Um, just the the difficulty I think for me has been making sure that people know that I'm accessible, that I need to hear uh, from them about what's what's going on um, uh, so and and this my the congregation I'm serving right now is very caring of each other and I'm, I'm really grateful for that I've been there three years now and they've um, they're really attentive to each other's needs and I know that that through all of this they're supporting each other which is a which is a real gift that really is yeah it's yeah, an yeah. An important time for that so that's yeah really great yeah. to hear so um, one of the things we've been talking about during these uh, interviews is just kind of resources, you know, whether it's books or other things that can help people through um, these times. So what are your thoughts on that front? Well, I've been uh, trying to catch up on, uh, on reading. And I, 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 other people have said this, or I, I've read other people on posting online, that um, I kind of expected when the isolation thing was happening and we started to uh, to be closed in i'm thinking wow it's going to give me lots of time to to read and to do more writing and you know just to 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 do some stuff that i wanted to do but no none of that stuff <laughs> like <laughs> pastoring by video and recording is like twice as much work as um as a normal week would so um I wish I was doing more reading. Um, I am not. I'm actually in the middle of a novel, which is which is really um, a distraction away from the the news. Um, what one book that I started actually just as this pandemic was was hitting the news was um, uh, 
and, and I found it really helpful is a book by John Swinton. And John is um, a professor at, at Aberdeen University in Scotland and a, a leading scholar in the disability theology um, uh, circles these days. And he, he released last year a book called um, Becoming Friends of Time. Um, and he, he focuses on our obsession, if you will, with, with time as we think about it and, you know, hours, minutes, seconds, days, weeks, um, and how that's really a human invention and that's not how God understands time. Um, and it's, it's a real, and, and then he relates it to people with disabilities because often that's, uh, that, that, that's the case is that we expect people with disabilities to function under this kind of uh, human invented time and that's not always practical for that to happen um, and 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 the fact that uh, the world expects us all to uh, produce to be creative we have to do something to be um, to be acceptable and uh, you know his what he says is and, and I I've said the same in, in my book as well, is that um, people with disabilities, Lindsay, my daughter, will never produce. She's not create, you know, she's not going to do something that makes her acceptable to society, but to God, she is always um, uh, accepted and always, um, always part of that creation in which we exist. So it's, long story is that the, that, that book and that concept kind of encourages me to settle down a little bit and don't worry too much about timing um, and to uh, to try and look at the, the larger, broader picture that's that's around us. Um, and, and particularly, I think, I, I also think it's particularly helpful um, in, in listening to the news debates now about uh, we need to get the economy back up. We need to get things running. We need to get things moving. We get, you know, and it's like, well, no, no, maybe we don't, right? You know, that that maybe life is more important than than what we can um, create and produce. Well, it sounds like I need to read that Swinton book because you know it's like yeah. I've, I've been programmed to be <laughs> att attempting to be productive my entire life. You know, I mean that's what's always driven me, and you know? or maybe too much. So uh, I think that would be a good uh, counter to my, uh, my behavior. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Take a look at it. It's really, um, it's really good. And um, um, it also makes me late for a lot of things. <laughs> That's a lifelong challenge of mine, of mine. Well, you've got a good reason now, at least. right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Now I have, now they have the academic reasons for it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we mentioned um, during you know, the introduction that you're a curator on the Compassionate Christianity mm -hmm. website, specifically on the Disabilities Resources page. Mm -hmm. So you want to give folks just a little uh, overview of what's there? Sure. John's book is on there. Um, he has several books. And, and there, there are a collection of uh, resources, books, and um, I think there are links to a, a number of the books that are prominent in the disability theology field um, these days. Um, there, are, there, are, there are a lot of good resources out there um, anymore. When I, when I started doing this, when Lindsay was born 32 years ago, she'll be 32 on Sunday, the 19th. Um, and I, where I think we're recording before that, and it's probably coming out online after that. So That's right. But 32 years. Um, that I've been doing this. When when I started out, when Lindsay was born, looking around for resources in the church, um, I would find maybe mimeographed sheets of revised Sunday school curriculum that you could use with children with disabilities. And, and I, yes, mimeograph, I really did mean mimeograph. <laughs> um, so, you know, so, but now, you know, 30 plus years later, this movement has grown and there are, um, you know, PhD programs in disability studies and um, disability theology programs in, for example, John's program in, in um, Aberdeen, uh, you know, a lot of 
pastoral care programs and theology programs. So lots of resources have grown over these past three decades. And, and I tried to identify some of them on the website for uh, Compassionate Christianity. And um, I linked to a number of books, new books, and then there's some old books that are, are really um, uh, essential reading for, for the field, like uh, Nancy Island's The, the Disabled God it came out 1988 or something like that, um, maybe later than that, but, um, but just kind of key books to understand. Um, and then there's some other resources to get deeper. And I, I've also linked on there uh, some videos of some recent um, um, people speaking about the issue or, uh, or uh, making presentations about it. And there is a big, there's a link there to the, uh, there's an annual, Disability Theology um, Conference that um, I have not been able to attend because I've been attending your conferences, Brian. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> They've always been the same week as the ones. Uh, oh, no, I didn't realize that. As, as the Beekner uh, Writers Workshop, yeah, they've always been that same week. Um, this year I was finally got registered and I was accepted as a presenter and I was all excited about going out to Michigan in May and guess what? We're not going. Slightly. Not this year. Not this year. Um, but th there's a link on the website, and that's a really good, a good place to get resources um, and to connect with people, people that are doing this work there. I guess I should also kind of put in a plug for uh, the Western Theological Seminary, the, the, the kind of disability resources that they have there. Yeah. I, I don't know much about that, but go ahead. Let's see, you want to say more about it? No, I mean, I, I'm not an expert in it, but I, I just know that they have like a, a subset of their seminary that helps train, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, either, I think, disabled folks for ministry, um, as well as just, you know, other churches to, to deal with, you know, the disabilities community, so. Yeah, so there, there are... Um, you know, kind of uh, co different components to the whole issue. And, and so one is um, training, uh, educating people with disabilities to become uh, professionals, clergy or professionals in the church, um, often a challenging thing to do. And, you know, I've heard all kinds of horror stories uh, about uh, uh, people with disabilities who are clergy, who are facing difficult times in the local parish or making it through the process, et cetera. And then the second piece of it is uh, trying to make sure churches are welcoming, inclusive, and open. And that's not just about physical accessibility, although that's important, um, but also about changing attitudes. And that's a, a lot of what I try to do over the years is to change congregations so they're more welcoming and, and inclusive. And then another component is actually the person with um, with a disability, physical or uh, intellectual or whatever, making sure that they're being able to access um, uh, what they need for their own faith um, journey, um, making sure that their needs are being met and their gifts are being welcomed into the church. So, you know, all different kinds of, uh, of pieces of the, uh, of the work that we're involved in. I guess I should also put a plug in for my own church in central New Jersey that uh, has recently launched a um, special worship service for uh, families that, you know, have um, a member who's, you know, got some uh, sort of dis disability. Um, it's called Joy Joyful Noise, and it's like once a month on Sunday afternoon. And uh, unfortunately, it's not going on now, obviously, but um, I'm sure that'll restart when, when we can. Yeah, yeah, those are those are important programs, and there's more and more of them as the years go along. Um, yeah, so it's always it's good to encourage it. Um, and, and what I let, let me say a word about what I've um, I've done with so Lindsay's gift and access fund is uh, is a uh, program that that I created along with my um, my other two uh, children, uh, uh, Tim and Lacey. And its goal is to provide small grants to congregations, faith groups that are trying to 
create more accessible uh, spaces, but also more welcoming um, communities in churches and synagogues and mosques, whatever. Um, and it's funded by some of my own money and some of uh, some memorial gifts and some donations now that we've been receiving. And over the past couple of years, we've been able to award very small grants. Once a year, we do this uh, around her Lindsay's birthday. Um, small grants for things like um, a church that's building a ramp or um, uh, putting in a hearing assist system in their sanctuary or uh, a Hebrew school locally here in Philadelphia who was renovating their building and there was a teacher that needed um, better access so they were able to use some of the money for a ramp and most recently this past year um, we helped to fund a program in Tanzania um, where a, a woman is training pastors about disability inclusion and how that can happen. Um, so that's been a real gift to be able to connect to, to them. Um, and it's a very small fund and uh, you know it's uh, it's something that I enjoy doing um, and the challenge of raising money for it is always uh, in front of me but um, well, why don't you send me a link to it, and uh, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll put the link to it, you know, on uh, the page for this uh, Reading Hope series, and then maybe yeah. you know, it'll draw some attention for you. Yeah, lindsaysgift.com is uh, the the site, but I can also send a link for you. Okay, awesome. Take a look at it. So let's talk about your book, Lindsay's Gift. Also, if we could, because that's a brand new um, release, and so tell us about that. It is. Lindsay's Gift is also my book, and um, it's, uh, you know, it's been in process for 30 years now, <laughs> um, and I just really felt this need to to get things, get her story down into uh, written form, um, if not for uh, anybody else, um, for myself, and just you know, putting together the stories that I've had over the years of our faith journey together and what she has been able to teach me about faith and uh, persistence and um, and simply presence. Uh, and I, I, my, my, I like to, to look at uh, Lindsay as, as, so Moses is standing before the burning bush and says to God, who should I tell the people that you are? And God says, I am. That's very basic, right? God simply is. And for somebody like Lindsay, who doesn't have any language, who has very limited abilities, um, who is also created in the image of God, that I am, her beingness, um, is what that God image is. And, and so I, um, that's an important foundation for me to start and to understand not only Lindsay, but any of us. Um, if we could just accept the fact that we, as being created in God's image, that we simply are, um, there's not a whole lot of need to produce or to describe any differently um, who any of us is. Um, so she's helped me to understand that and to be challenged by that. Um, and to uh, to look at the world around me in that kind of that kind of way. Um, so the book is a collection of stories uh, that connect she and I to our faith journey, um, trying to help churches be more accessible and more welcoming. And um, her presence in congregations that I've served really trying trying to make a difference for for them. Um, so it's it's finally out. And it, you know, it. Uh, I I had said just as this all this pan this pandemic was happening, I I finally pushed the button on my computer to send it off to a final draft so I could get proof copies. And um, then I found out the next day about my lung condition. And then like a week later, uh, the pandemic started. And then at the end of that week, my dog died. So it's been a really <laughs> challenging time. But I finally got it out off of my computer. And on <laughs> onto to paper so I'm really happy that it's out and um, I uh, released it to 
it's on Amazon. I released it to um, some friends, uh, you know, online, sending it to them. And then our official launch date will be Sunday, her birthday. Um, so it's it's out there now, and we'll see what happens to it. I'm really I'm really excited. And Brian, you've been a great help in nudging me forward um, to to do that. And you know, Frederick Beekner's uh, work, the the Beekner workshop that you put together, and um, and, and Beekner. I say in in the acknowledgments in the book that. I've I've never met Frederick Beekner face to face, but he uh, he knows who I am, and his writing uh, really speaks to me and to us. I mean, to many of us. Um, but that's that's really been a permission for me to be able to write my story is um, is reading his stuff. So I've been grateful for that. Yeah, yeah, I can totally relate to that. Um, yeah. And uh, just as a side note, we featured um, Jim's book on the weekly emails in uh, Compassion Christianity, Writing for Your Life, and uh, Publishing in Color recently. So you can find out more about it there. And then, of course, you know, as Jim mentioned, it's available on Amazon. Which Yeah, I'm, I'm also hoping that um, it will. Some, some friends have suggested to me that in their early reading of it that it's it also may be a good resource for small groups in churches and um, kind of reading Sorry. groups. So, so I, I'm expecting shortly to have out there as well uh, a small booklet of questions um, to guide reflection and discussion. And um, you know, hope, I'm hoping kind of maybe some churches will pick it up. Good, good. Well, please let me know when that's available because I'll let yeah. you know also. Yeah, I definitely will. Definitely will. All right. So, Jim, I just want to thank you for uh, joining us. Um, you know, this has really been uh, a great conversation, a very useful one, uh, unique, you know, um, as compared to all the other interviews that we've been doing uh, because of your expertise in the whole area of disabilities and your dedication to that. So, so thank you for sharing that with us and, and for being with us today. All right. Well, next time at the other end of this, face-to-face, -face, we'll see each other, I'm sure. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but not shaking hands anymore. So, <laughs> all right. We'll thank you, Brian. Thank you for this. All right. Thanks again, Jeff.